How many of us here have heard the phrase, man, those Asians are good at ping pong. They stand like 10 feet back from the table. Anybody here heard that before? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that is not always true, um, though the facts and statistics may say that Asians are better at ping pong. Uh, other things are misconceived by Americans and other things in general. Uh, for a semester at UWM, I was trained by one of the former chairs of USA Table Tennis and the current president of the largest ping pong club in uh, Wisconsin. Um, I was trained in her ways and I learned many things through that. Um, and through that, I pursued um, a couple of ping pong tournaments and have played a couple of professional uh, further things in that area. Um, ping pong, I learned, has quite a deep history. Um, though it's not very long ago, it does have a lot of things that go with it. Uh, it also has a lot to do with the equipment used, and it also has a lot of rules that are misconstrued by Americans that are very different when you're playing the sport professionally. The history, uh, according to Australian Sports Newswire, one of the um, sports uh, reporters that was covering the first Olympics in China, um, did an article on the history that uh, ping pong had. It started in the late 1800s in England and was used as just regular objects like wine corks and things like that. And eventually was coined by the Parker Brothers um, in 1901 as a game and its popularity started to grow. Um, about 20 years later, in 1926, uh, the first ping pong world championships were held and it continued to grow in popularity until it became one of the Olympic sports for the first time in 1988. Uh, the further part of um, why China was so um, important in ping pong history was because for that time during the Cold War when communism was a big part of uh, what was going on in the world, uh, China was one of the big communist countries. And the first time that anybody was actually allowed into China was because of ping pong. This whole side of ping pong was called ping pong diplomacy, where one American was challenged to play somebody in China and was the first time that China opened up to anybody outside of uh, their country and began to do so much more throughout the rest of uh, their time as a communist country to where now they're a free enterprise country. Uh, the second part of ping pong's complicated and um, com well, very complex way you play it is through its equipment. Now there's tables and there's paddles and there's nets and things like that and they all have specific uses as a sport and they have specific regulations as a sport. What I'm going to cover today is just the paddle. The paddle has multiple parts to it that help um, in the way you play and things like that. The first part is called the blade. It's the wooden part in the middle that you don't always see but it's very important. It's made of many separate pieces of wood and occasionally has things like carbon fiber, glass fiber in the middle that help with um, the way that you can play and that's regulated with how much you can have in it because sometimes more of uh, carbon fiber than wood gives you a advantage in further play when you get higher up in the levels. Um, the second part of the ping pong paddle is called the rubber and now in my class there was nine guys and the lady gave us a speech on rubbers and how to use them and we were all <laughs> having a pretty immature fun time. But that um, is made of different weights, different lengths, different thicknesses that help with um, your style of play. And there's defensive plays, there's uh, uh, offensive plays that help with you know weight of how you're making the ball spin and things like that. There's also something called pips. Pips are the little things on the end of the uh, rubbers that stick out and they help with the grip and also influence your style of play. So if you want it to spin a certain way, the length of the pips can get no further than two millimeters, um, but they are always um, something that will be on every single ping pong paddle. Um, the last part of ping pong that is misconstrued by Americans is how to play. When you're serving, you want to serve um, every two, whereas most American games are played where you serve every five and you switch back and forth. Games in America recreation are used to usually to 21. Games that are held professionally are to 11 and are best of, uh, best of an odd number of games, usually three, so that's two out of three is what they usually do. Um, the second part is how to serve. When you serve, you want to serve six inches up 
and you serve without going past the white line, and then after that you're supposed to hit your side, then the receiver's side. Um, the final part is a ranking system. When you're playing somebody who's better than you, you can lose up to 8 points and you can gain up to 50. When you're playing somebody worse than you, you can gain up to 8 points and lose up to 50. So this is all new information I'm hoping that you guys can go forward with and use in the future.